Hi family, it's Ari and it's a blessing to be with you here again today. Uh, today I wanted to talk about our weaknesses and the Lord's strength. And uh, so why don't we just pray before we begin? Oh Father, we thank you Lord that you are so faithful in our lives Lord and we just uh, give this time to you Lord and ask that you would refine our hearts um, that you would just give us focused minds and um, let your Holy Spirit guide us now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there are two passages of scripture, two men um, that I want to point out today. Uh, they had pleas before the Lord that um, were not answered according to their own desires, but God gave them a bigger picture of why it was better for them to go through uh, their trial and their struggle and their, and their weaknesses. So first I want to read Jeremiah 12, uh, where the prophet is looking to God. He's um, asking God to take down the wicked and to bring justice uh, to the wicked who are rising up against them. You know, it's that questioning of, you know, why, Lord, you are just. Why don't you bring justice uh, to those who are wicked, you know? Um, in the previous chapter, in chapter 11, uh, Jeremiah, uh, he felt like he was a sheep for the slaughter um, in, in the hands of um, the, his enemies. And he prayed that the wicked would now be put in the same place. And so God gives him a reply to his prayer in chapter 12, and God asks him a few questions. So Jeremiah 12, uh, verse 5. If you have run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how will you contend with horses? And if, the, in, if in the land of peace in which you trusted they wearied you, then how will you do in the floodplain of the Jordan? And doesn't that just cut to the heart? I mean, <laughs> wow. Jeremiah was certainly in a challenge. So he, you know, like a hard-fought race with a footman. You know, um, there, was, there was a sense of spiritual and mental and emotional exertion involved with the persecution um, from his fellow villagers you know, in, in Jeremiah's little hometown. He wrestled with the prosperity of the wicked and why God didn't seem to deliver uh, justice to them. God questions, um, God's questions for this prophet really reveals Jeremiah's and our own insufficiencies. You know, what is our strength to fight what rises up? We're weak, you know, and rather than delivering us from the days of even smaller struggles, God uses them to prepare for what is ahead. And we don't always get the easy path from, you know, our adversity coming up against us, but God allows what he does for our growth and for our dependence on God. And what we see um, from God's hand here is that, you know, he cares less about our comfort, you know, and this is throughout scripture, he cares less about our comfort and more about our character, our reliance on him and our true worship of him. And so, you know, that's an interesting thing to con consider, you know, God might be using your struggle today to prepare you for something even more difficult in the future. And God encouraged Jeremiah uh, to regard his present challenge as preparation for greater challenges to come. And I hope that that doesn't, um, you know, scare you or discourage you. Um, but I hope that it encourages you that not only does God hold the bigger picture of what's to come, you know, he weaves every detail together, uh, preparing you now, but he also supplies your strength for the lighter and heavier challenges. Um, you know, it's, he's the one um, that is supplying our strength for these days and for the days to come. And to learn that reliance on, on him is, um, that's something that we all need, right? Jeremiah needed to learn how to trust God and draw on his, on his strength and the present challenge in order to prepare him for the greater challenges in the future. And when we want to be prepared for, uh, for something in the future, um, and, you know, there are some things that we 
we attempt to handle in our own strength. There are some things that maybe we can handle in our own strength. And I mean, not really, because, you know, he's our very breath. Um, but in some sense, we can attempt to do things on our own strength and kind of get by, you know. But we need to be careful that we're not allowing that and that doesn't become a pattern in our lives. Well, the second passage I want to look at is um, about the Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we hear Paul's story of his thorn in his flesh, um, this, this struggle that he asked God to remove uh, from him three times. And Paul gets a response from the Lord in verses 9 and 10. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. And that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses, in insults and in hardships, in persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And that is just a beautiful upside down uh, promise that we have as believers, right? Uh, in the world, you know, we're, we're told to be as strong as we can be, that we're enough. You know, that's a, a huge thing that the world likes to tell, tell us, right? That we're enough, we're sufficient in our, of ourselves, but it's this beautiful upside down promise, you know, that in Christ, you know, he gets the glory for being our strength. For when our, we are weak, we are strong. Therefore, we can be excited and be so content in our in our struggles and our hardships and our persecutions and difficulties. And again, you know, the purpose of God is not always to deliver us from our afflictions or the thorns in our flesh. Instead, he, he lets his glory be seen in our weaknesses. And David Guzik pointed out that we don't really believe that God's grace is sufficient until we believe that we are insufficient. So are you in maybe a, a physical battle or, you know, a, a tense or disunified relationship, you know, maybe a financial struggle, or are you, you know, looking to be delivered, um, you know, or for God to be with you, strengthening you in your weakness, something something definitely to think about. Well, just to close, uh, I just want to share a little word from Amy Carmichael. Strength of my heart, I need not fail, not mine to fear, but to obey. With such a leader, who could quail? Thou art as thou wert yesterday. Strength of my heart, I rest in thee. Fulfill thy purposes through me. Why don't we pray? Oh Lord, we thank you that you are the strength of our hearts and we can rely on you. You are God, our rock. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we can recognize our weaknesses, Lord. We can recognize the giftings that you've given us to walk in. But in all things, Lord, we're called to, uh, to rely on you, Lord, to worship your strength, your power. And so, God, I pray that, uh, Lord, you would help me and our church family to walk forward in your strength this week, Lord. And, um, Lord, encourage our hearts. Father, we thank you that you are our God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, church family, I love you and I will see you soon.